Welcome back to another episode of the A-League Couch Critics. I'm Brad. And I'm Sog. And today we're going to have a chat about the matches that were on the weekend and also have a bit of a, a chat about how the coaches have been going, especially some of the newly appointed ones. Let's get straight into it. Let's do it. First up, we had. Hello, my wife there? just walked into the door, <laughs> hey. through the door. How you doing? Surprise. First game on Saturday, it was Wellington Phoenix and Perth Glory, and we both tipped this wrong. So there goes that yeah. 100% record. What did you make of the match? Did you watch much of it? Uh, I kind of had it on in the background. I watched Phoenix kind of pepper the goal, pretty much. Mm. Just, I saw a lot of the Knicks. I didn't see much of Perth. Mm. I think. Perth, by all accounts, kind of stole a result there. You know, a good yep. goal is a, yep. a really nice goal yep. on the counter. Uh, yeah, what do you think? I didn't watch it, to be quite honest. <laughs> but I think, you know, that five at the back, Tony Popovich has set up really well for the final, the knockout football, you know. Pop a goal up front and sit back and defend it. And, you know, it seemed to work because, you know, Wellington had a lot of possession. So. That's a good one, pop a goal, yeah. Uh, yes. Didn't even, didn't even think about that. I, I was fairly critical of the five at the back, but I've got to Just say... It, more yeah, yeah, there we go. Maybe. Go on. I was a bit critical of the five at the back, but, I mean, to their credit, they rode their luck. There was a couple of close ones. Uh, they defended. You know, that's what you've got to do in finals football. Uh, and they managed to keep a clean sheet. So, yeah. you know, props yeah, to I, them. Yeah, yeah, I hate really defensive football like that, but you know what? It works for them. And we're going to do it tonight for Bathurst Athletic. <laughs> so we're not spoiling any tactic there for our opposition because this will come out on Tuesday. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, no. And so I I do wonder that. I don't think it changes my opinion. I think Sydney will still beat Perth uh, because I think Sydney have a few more attacking, creative players to break down that defence and, and get their opportunities. But yeah. uh, Wellington were missing. Davila hasn't looked the same since they've come back. So yeah. it's a bit sad and, and lots of people have uh, reached out to the Knicks. You know, thanks so much for the, the Phoenix players. You've been away from your families yeah. and your homes yeah. for a couple of months now just to finish a game of, you know, a season of football. Um, unfortunate for them to go out like that, but hmm. they can be proud of themselves, hold their heads up because they've had a really good season. And I'm sure they'll build in the future. And if if Italic stays there and they keep some of those players like the VR, yeah, um, I, I don't know if Hooper's going to stay, but if they keep like Stephen Taylor and a few others, like they can really build for that. That was their highest ever regular season finish. That's and, if their uh, license continues, because isn't it uh, supposed to end at the end of next year? And no one's heard anything uh, about that. Yeah, so that's it. I, maybe I have the no Phoenix idea. will just disappear. But uh, hopefully yeah. not. Hopefully not. They, they've got a good as long as they can keep, uh, particularly Tale. Because mm. uh, they had a good season under Rudin as well, and then lost their their manager. So yeah, everyone went to Western. That, yeah, yeah. If they can keep that going, you know, I think they'll be all right yeah. next season. Um, and Perth, you know, march on. Yeah. Uh, the next final was Brisbane, and they were hosting uh, Western United. <laughs> mm. De Marti scores a banger. What do yep. you make of that one? Yeah. Um... It's incredible from a player that um, the FFA didn't really think it was worth being a marquee four years ago. So imagine yeah, if he had him. another five years in this league. If this oh. was, you know, if he was playing when he was thirty. How old is he? Thirty eight. He's thirty seven. Uh, yeah. Oh, thirty seven. Okay, we might be get a couple more years. We might get four years out of him. But he loves it. He's loving life down under. Yeah. And you know, Western march on. I really love the Western team, the club. I'm not a big fan of the club, but I just really love the team that got going there. And yeah, you know. They're, First season, and they're into one game within the grand final. I think that's a massive achievement. And um, Diamante, Barisha, all the, the whole team's um, fantastic mm. to watch. And, you know, great goal and held on. Well, I think it was they scored about the 20 odd minute, and then they held on for the rest of the game. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well and so, again, Brisbane, uh, I think they were the most under the radar team in this final series. They've not played fantastically all year, um, they've not been bad. You've had they just the whole... can't score goals. Well, yeah. not enough goals. They scored about twenty. Since they, since they signed Scott McDonald, that's helped. But mm. yeah, if Scott McDonald is your top scorer, like and a guy some... that came in halfway through the season, there's some issues there. Yeah. yeah. So, be interesting to see what happens with them next season. Warren Moon has he got the job permanently? I think. I think. I think he has. I don't know. Maybe. 
Uh, we'll look into that yep. because we're going to have a chat about coaches in just a moment. Um, but that means Western United going to play Melbourne City in yep. the other semi, yep. uh, the first semi on uh, Wednesday night. Who are you Double tipping? Header. Who are you tipping for that? Oh, this is a cracker, eh? Real Cause, cracker. Because we got it wrong. We, we you know. Yeah, so and what did I? Up. I pick, uh, pick City. You to pick City. I've seen the grand final, but I. Jeez, Western. Jeez, this will this will be a cracker. Yep. I reckon this could go either way, and I wouldn't be surprised. I really want to tip Western because I'm really enjoying them playing. Mm. Um, City. Oh boy, City or Western. I've I've got to pick. I can't keep just stalling and mumbling <laughs> to myself here. I'm gonna. I'll have to go with City. Still My original tip was City, so we'll have to go with City. But I love if Western United got up. I would love if Western beat them. Like, that'd be fantastic. If they could make it to the final in their first year, you know. Yeah. Good old uh, Wanderers, the last team to do that. Mm. Uh, yeah, it'd be really good yeah, to see. Yeah, it'd be great to see Western play Perth in the grand final. Just be... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah no, I, I love it if Western get up. But you still think it's Sydney, be... Sydney City? Oh, yeah. I, I probably, like... You know, City and Sydney FC have been mm-hmm. um, the dominant teams. Well, Sydney the dominant team and Melbourne City still a fantastic quality team. That's been up the top all season. Well, around the top all season. Western yeah, yeah. have just got into the final. Yeah, I, I think City's class will beat them. But I hope Western United. <laughs> all right. Uh, we'll move on to our second topic then. For... We're not going to talk about Sydney FC Perth. We, we think Sydney's going to win that. Oh, it is. That's easy. Yeah. We talked about that before. Uh as long as it's more exciting than last year's grand final, because yeah, that was that a snooze fest. Yeah, well, there's no scene allowed to chip a penalty straight into red man's hands. Mm. So uh, let's move on to our next topic then, Bradley. Is it a lighter topic? <laughs> it's a lighter topic, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Depends if you're a victory fan or not. They've just announced uh, today when we're recording this, mm. tomorrow, uh, or yesterday if you're watching this on Tuesday, mm. that Grant Brebner has been handed the the coaching job for yep. a year uh, for I don't know if it's actually three years. No, it was two years. I think two I watched a bit job. of the live press conference. It was two years. Interesting so. interesting yeah. decision. Uh, obviously, he was interim coach. Uh, didn't do a fantastic job as interim coach. They did get that nice 4-0 win over Perth in their last game of the season. But yeah. losing to the Mariners, a couple of other lacklustre performances. Playing youth, which has been really exciting. But I think that's been more out of necessity than choice. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, I really wanted Aloys here to get the job <laughs> just for the memes because A League memes were just raving and talking. Like they were gonna laugh their head off if Aloys got the job. I don't think actually Aloys is as bad as they're making him out to be. Yeah, um, like with that, I don't know. Maybe you guys all all think I'm I'm joking here, but Aloys under Brisbane copped a lot of flack. He finished fourth two seasons in a row. Yeah, and he knows football. Like yeah. I'm not saying Brebner doesn't, but oh, yeah, I don't yeah. think Aloisi is as bad as bad the A League memes are making out. It does mean you get his brother Ross, you know, more than likely. But mm. uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm not sure why Victory fans were so opposed to that. Maybe it's his links to Sydney FC and you know the premiership that we won. But uh, yeah, Brebner gets the job, and it's kept this trend of yeah. uh, coaches from inside the club getting. The job. So we've seen Warren Moon, who was part of Brisbane Raw, uh, he got the job up there. We've seen Carl Veer, who's you know part of the fabric of yep. Adelaide, got the job down there. Uh, Di Marini was assistant coach, yep. interim coach, now got a one-year contract, and now Brebner. That's four teams. Uh, Bradley, what does this say about our ability to attract people from overseas? Is it just a COVID thing? Or is there some writing on the wall for Australian football here? Oh, I, th- I think COVID has a lot to do with it. I think Robbie Fowler would have stayed and potentially continued in the next season if COVID never happened. And mm. then there's a whole that's a whole other issue, and there's a lot of drama going on there with um, Robbie Fowler. So I, th- I think the majority of it is COVID, and that it's quite hard to attract um, high-profile coaches to come, you know, halfway across the world when they can stay in what is a hard time close to their family and whatnot. Um, sure. Um, yeah, the, I don't know if it's all doom and gloom for Australian football. I think it's pretty exciting for some of these guys that probably wouldn't have got a chance at a top job until this all happens. So it'll give them a chance to show whether they're good enough um, or not. Mm. 
Yeah, I'm happy to see how they go. I think we're definitely going to see a dip in money invested and probably players coming in the A-League next year with the down in the salary cap and obviously with COVID. So I think we've just got to expect that. We've got to accept that um, long-term. I don't think it's a long-term problem. I think once all this COVID crap goes away, I think um, we can go back to attracting big coaches because we've attracted some quality coaches over the year, like um, yeah. that Czech guy that came to... Sydney FC. And I mean, when Tony Popovich yeah. came from assistant manager at Crystal Palace in yeah, the Premier yeah. League. So he knocked back an assistant job in the biggest league in the world to come out here. Yeah, sure. Um, so, and Ange Postacoglu, um, in the past, we've had, we've, we've had some great coaches. And I think yeah. um, that'll continue eventually. Yeah. One day. Uh, you know what I would love to see is a second division where <laughs> some of these younger coaches who aren't as experienced got a chance to show what they've got in a competition that's not our top tier. Yeah. And then if they're actually... Well, that was like Mark Rudin. He was coach of City United in the NPL, and then he got his go at Brighton. We don't quite see enough coaches going from NPL level up. I reckon the second division would be a nice uh, middle if it was professional to test these coaches out and see what they got. Mm. We have chatted about the second division proposal on this channel, so um, head over to that video. It might pop up on the screen. It might not, because we love Mm. talking about that, and we won't talk too much longer on that. Yeah. Um, But what what do you think of the coaches' situation? Yeah, look, I... I just worry about some of these coaches. I, I know at the end of a season when you're interim, you know, you, you can't really make many changes. Mm. But I don't think that any of these guys have done a particularly great job. You know, Brisbane didn't look electric under Warren Moon. Uh, Carl Vietz, Adelaide, I think they looked the best of all the interim coaches. Um, yeah. You know, it, Australian ones we're talking about, not yeah, like um, Carl right. Robinson or anything. Yeah, no, Carl Robinson's a, a total different. But he's done a great job. He he was actually hired for the job, you know, yeah. uh, pre pre COVID. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, Di Marini. We were looking at his stats before. I don't think it's amazing. I don't think he's done a great job. Some of the wins. Yeah, I mean, it's Wanderers, so I'm not going to rate him. But I I don't think he's done an amazing job. And now with Brebna as well, at the end of the season, I know their season was dead and buried, but mm. he's not done a fantastic job with them at the end of the season. Um, I just worry a little bit. You know, there's there's four coaches who I'm not sure are really cut out for it, mm. and they're going to start the season. Yeah, I, I'll be interested to see how how those teams go. I don't think any of them will make the finals next year. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's it's still a while off before next season, so MacArthur will I top the league. <laughs> MacArthur are doing great things um, with the signings they've picked up. I know they've only got five official in the book. They've got some nice signings. Of, yeah, they'll announce some good ones. Hey, Mustafa Amini's without a club now. Maybe they could. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of A League clubs. I'm sure there's a lot of A League clubs trying to grab him. Um, yeah, I don't because he they, did a great job over there. He did not. Well, his contract was two million. He was going to go to a Turkish, Turkish club, wasn't club, he? And then that out. fell through. Yes, um, interesting. Uh, heaps going on in, mm. in Aussie football. The finals are still kicking. Bradley, are you going to go to the grand final? Tickets are selling. When's that? Next Saturday? No, it's this... Next Sunday. This Saturday? It's this, oh, this Sunday, yeah. Well, I'm not working, so... How are we going to get tickets? 30,000? 30, How many people are allowed in? Probably only like 5,000. Yeah, more. look, they're probably selling out quick. Uh, we're not members. Well, I'm <laughs> members of Wanderers. You're not a member of Sydney FCA. No, so we're probably no. not going to get tickets. That's all right. Uh, we hope you enjoy the semifinals tomorrow night and the final on uh, on Saturday or Sunday. And Sunday, Sunday yeah. Uh, no, Sydney versus City. That's who we're, we're picking West, still. But, but everyone wants Western and Perth. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, we'll chat to you next time. Sick. Bye.